we started to, or I started to do just very recently uh, this process that I'm describing as quantum still point, and it's a one-on-one -on -one personal intensive that happens over a period of three days. Actually, three days, or it can be more. We've actually got a gentleman who's uh, flying over from uh, Sweden uh, in about two weeks, a little less than two weeks, and uh, we're going to be taking him through the uh, the process. Gentleman who's uh, who's been to Heartland, who was on the support team way back years ago, and has been doing his work all these years, and he's ready to take everything to the next level. So, so it's a an intensive process, and normally what people do is they come here. We're in Bristol, Virginia, so they come here and get a hotel. I work with them in the hotel one on one over a period of three days. Day of the intensive is basically some energy field work and the breath to smooth out and simply start the opening process, uh, paying attention to where resistance lies. And a big, a big component of the process is becoming aware of resistance and being able to soften into that resistance in order to allow whatever flow is being held back to be restored. And then the third day moves it into the next level, into the quantum still point, which works with bringing the core of the structure into alignment so that there's a full complement of energy that comes through the system. And when that occurs, you know, it's kind of like if you've ever been uh, cleaning off the sidewalk and there's some muck on the sidewalk and what do you do? You kink the hose and you let the pressure build up and it flushes out. Well, that kind of extra rush of energy is is part of what happens when one steps into the quantum still point and the flush, the energetic flush that happens is all just part of the process. So that's what quantum still point is. And it's a it's a combination, actually some early work that I did very early in my medical training back fifty years ago. Uh, and it's it's a it's a work that is more intense than works to do in a a regular intensive situation. You know, if you come to Heartland and there are 30, 40, 50 people there, it's not the kind of work that, that works in that environment. It's a one-on-one -on -one process. And so that's where that process happens in a, a private setting. And let's just move into uh, a reading of what that process means. So, awakening to being through quantum still point. So what is that process? And I'd like to actually start out with a quote that when I was doing some research on, for myself, understanding this process, I came across a quote from Carl Jung that to me was just so powerful in looking at the whole of the system. I'd like to start out with that particular idea. And here's what he says. The healer is not just working for a particular patient, but for him, herself, as well as his own soul. And in so doing, he is perhaps laying an infinitesimal grain in the scales of humanity's soul. Small and invisible as this contribution may be, it is yet an opus magnum. And to me, what impacts about that statement is that, and what I would love to have spent some time in the energy field of Carl Jung, <laughs> that would have been just awesome. But his 
his grasp, his comprehension of the wholeness of being and how what each of us does in the way of our individual work, how it impacts each and every other person that has ever lived. So in the quantum still point, our practice is that of welcoming an instant of communication and healing through a moment of profound silence brought on by energy field work and the unwinding of the power of the still point breath, both of which contribute to opening doors we may not even have known existed. Now, known in the ancient Aramaic language, Ruku de Kutcha, the breath, when we're talking about the still point breath, carries a wisdom from within, a knowing that's always been with you and is literally in Aramaic defined as a feminine elemental force that undoes the effects of your errors and teaches you the truth. So in the process, we're enlisting that feminine elemental force that resides within us. The three days is geared to support the participant in gaining a subtle awareness of any form of resistance and developing the skill involved in opening to the deepest still points through willingness and the unreserved release of that resistance, physical, mental, and emotional. And by so doing, creating a reset from within of physiology and mind that is generally considered to be impossible. The objective is to open the space for deep structural and energetic realignment and reorganization brought on by the freeing, if only for an instant, the mind, which results in deep silence. Mystics and yogis spend years in an attempt to experience this level of relief from the mind and develop this level of internal awareness. Nobel Prize winner Max Planck said, in all my research, I have never come across matter. To me, the term matter implies a bundle of energy which is given form by an intelligent spirit. As a man who's devoted his whole life to the most clear-headed science, to the study of matter, I can tell you, as a result of my research about atoms, this much. There is no matter as such. All matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particles of an atom to vibration and holds this most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. Now that was written by Max Planck, who's a Nobel Prize winning physicist, for his discovery of quantum theory. And quantum theory just totally revolutionized the understanding of atomic and subatomic processes. And if it's understood and applied, it revolutionizes the world of healing. You remember when we were talking about the conflict going on in the Middle East, and I shared that one of the first instances that I'm aware of where quantum understanding, quantum theory was applied was in the book of Job in the scriptures, where Job goes through all of this trauma and loss and tragedy. And in a flash of insight, which if you read the book, for quite some time he ignores, in a flash of insight, Job recognizes, recognizes pardon me, quantum mechanics 
And he says, that which I feared most has come upon me. That which I dreaded has happened to me. That's Max Planck's work. And then, though, Job, if you read through the whole book, Job comes up with that, but he's in such confusion, and there's so many people around him with so much noise and distraction that he doesn't act on or recognize even the insight that has come to him. And then finally, when he expresses what changed and restored everything he'd lost. It happened to receive a result, he says, as I took back my words. So Job is talking here about looking within and Carl Jung offers this piece of genius advice. Who looks without, that is perception, dreams. Who looks within, awakens. Through this sacred journey of quantum still point, trust enters. Perception is quelled. And the voice of the past is weakened as physiology moves into a superconductor state that allows the full experience of conscious, active, present love to enter and do the work of transmuting anything unlike itself. This transmutation gives you back the power that has, through blame, been energetically locked up and rendered unavailable because it has been hidden by denial within generations of unresolved, dissociated pain and trauma. Through the dissolution of pain-based energies, the connection to the authentic self and inner wisdom strengthens, which opens a gateway to living in deeper ways from the state of being and in the actuality of creation. Satan, in Aramaic, a state of mind, the resistor, one who misleads, As one's resistance is progressively dismantled, which is what happens through the use of the breath, a higher source in perception, vision becomes available. Rather than being locked into the replicate mind and re-experiencing the miscreations and abuse of one's own unresolved generational patterns and misperceptions, awareness and the experience of self as love opens on a whole new level. The ultimate objective of the quantum still point process is to free oneself from the influence of energetic patterns, often generational, behind the why is this happening to me again experience that overtakes lives regardless of how many defense mechanisms, no matter how brilliantly one tries to hide. The deep sense of safety and support experienced in the process opens the freedom to access on multiple levels what one has attempted to hide, but really has only hidden from themselves. The purpose of life when one lives in deception is to uncover, to expose that deception by kicking us right square in the limitation. That is the reason for all pain and untoward experiences. The deeper the deception, the harder the kick. Nothing is ever truly hidden, but is always seen indirectly in the light of day. It all comes out in the wash. Unconscious dynamics, when the space is safe enough, are suddenly revealed. They become clear and show themselves directly in the mind where, because of the presence of active love, 
dissolution, called forgiveness, occurs spontaneously. Loosened through the breath, Ruka de Kutcha, there is a release of toxic deposits as energies based in any form of fear and or hostility are accessed, faced, and dissipated. The human energy field is not designed to harbor any form of fear, nor its siblings, pain, suffering, loss, disappointment, or hostility. The energy of love is the very life force that is designed to fuel both body and mind. Misaligned physiology renders proper proper signaling based in love unavailable as everything else pushes its way out and is, quote-unquote, made known in the light of day. As resistance is reduced and alignment is progressively perfected, there's a proportional increase in life energy flow. And instead of external expression, unconscious dynamics become internally available. And the instant they are correctly perceived, they are spontaneously resolved. Joy is a natural byproduct of this process of release, no matter the depth, the age, the intensity, or cause of the trauma. As the actual energy of love flows freely throughout the body and mind, dissociated memories are loosed. As overlays of both personal and generational patterns of energetic trauma are liberated and flushed out of tissue, the structure is freed of distortions and abnormalities. So-called physical diseases, rather than being treated, are now able to be released at the cause level. The expressions of these changes are called miracles. Working within beliefs, rather than the actuality of what exists, is somewhat like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. The band sounds better, but the ship's still going down. Direct contact with actuality, rather than living through beliefs and perceptual constructs of the mind, removes us from projections of past and future. Review the Max Planck quote that we opened with. Be still and know. Freed from projected mental constructs, being, inspired, incarnates quietly into the mind and body that lets go and is free of negative stress. By entering gently into this quiet space of profound stillness, physiologically induced, and inviting the mind, which causes all minds to be, to bring reorganization and restructuring, as well as sink you with deeper levels of presence, is the cause of wholeness and healing. This is all based excuse me, my page just skipped. Give me just a second here to pull my page back up. So this is all based in the teachings and understanding presented in the ancient Aramaic presentations of the great physician who was not a miracle worker but an actual physician. A physician as real in practice as any physician known today. His healing messages were so badly distorted when interpreted by Greek philosophers who called themselves translators, that he, if exposed to their messages today, would say, that's all Greek to me. The physiological architecture of the human form as an energy system is designed to move continuously through a wide range of structural shapes. Any restriction or alteration in motion means a deprivation distortion and or blockage of energy flow. The bony structure of the quote-unquote body in its natural state is literally an intricate, delicately tuned, highly complex, self-adjusting antenna 
designed to move through a wide range of shapes and capture a similarly broad range of energies. The shape of an antenna determines the frequencies it receives and broadcasts. Physical, mental, and emotional trauma, including things like the birthing process, can compromise or disturb the antenna's proper rhythm, structure, and motion, thus inhibiting energy flow. Since all energy carries information, a loss of, blockage, or change to that information results in challenges. The restoration of proper motion, structure, and flow undoes those acquired dynamic stores, missing information. The blockage I'm referring to generally takes one of two forms. First is the inhibition of access to what the system is designed to receive and function from, hence a loss of guidance, often resulting in dysfunction, emptiness, physiological and psychospiritual disturbances, hopelessness, block creativity, and disease. The second type of blockage is the effect of willful denial and dissociation from content that is acquired or held within the system. This results in an unnatural state called the unconscious mind, that which is covered over by the quote-unquote veil of the temple, which over generations results in aberrant emotions and behavior prompts that interfere with cell and organ function, each of which disturbs and destroys lives. In the world, these anomalies mean that the energetic patterns with which we create our lives, the energies which we literally emanate or send out into the world, are distorted. The individual in denial thinks they're sending out one message, which they blame the receiver for misreading. Truth is, life always responds perfectly to the exact unconscious signal sent. And the one in denial tends to be left wondering, why are they doing this to me again? And another quote from Carl Jung, until the unconscious becomes conscious, it will direct our lives and we will call it fate. Whatever is rejected from the self appears through blame in the world, all perception, as an event. We meet ourselves and our projections on others time and again in a thousand disguises on the path of life. Everything that appears to irritate us about others can lead to understanding and healing of oneself. Carl Jung, slightly edited. The principal actions at the core of the quantum still point are the mobilization of the structure and the freeing of restrictions which restores the integrity of its movement as the still point breath melts and dissolves blocks and disintegrative energies as they surface. Forgiving inhibiting energies and restoring the full range of motion at the core of the structure facilitates reception of proper signals and operative energies that are interchanged with that in which we, quote-unquote, live, move, and have our being. This process also cleans up energetic patterns, the instruction sets we are continuously sending out to the world. With punishment, attack, trauma and defense dissolved, forgiven, the inevitable and natural shift in others as they respond to the new energetic constructions extended, which now match conscious intentions and goals, is usually called a miracle. Internally, that looks like, hmm, I did this work inside of me and they changed. What in fact has happened is that having resolved an internal dissociated conflict one no longer sends out inconsistent messages to the world. The mystic's journey is completed. 
the ultimate result of deliberation of generationally acquired incoherent energies of the past, despair, violence, suffering, pain, and death, gives rise to a host of new skills, including the ability to be the presence of love and compassion in all circumstances. Love has incarnated in the manger of form. Creature and creator become at one. The sweet space of quietness and serenity then extends to all unquiet minds and brings an instant of stillness where the awareness of the eternal presence of love has an opportunity to return. Remembering is quiet now. So I join you in breathing. Yeah, it, you know, the yeah. mind plays this game up. I've got to figure it out. And the fact is that the dynamics are so huge and the project is so monumental that there's no such thing as even getting close to figuring it out. But And that's where that one thought comes. And to me, one of the main objectives of the quantum still point is to inspire the mind to as I said in the in the reading at least for an instant to let go and I believe what's happening there my best understanding at this point of what's happening there is that we have this created energy system that was created in total perfection as a vehicle and instrument for love. And then it was turned over to us. You know, you could almost imagine the moment in which the creator says, okay, this is it. This is my highest expression. So now I'm going to go inside and I'm going to just become obedient. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Ask and you'll receive. You know, you listen in the ancient scriptures and it says, Here's the creator talking to it. It says, of the works of my hands, command ye me. The creator's telling us, tell me what you want and I'll bring it to you. And, and I believe that that's an absolute on the part of the creator. And it doesn't matter what it is we ask for, the good, the bad, and the ugly. The creator has no choice now. The creator has said, I will follow your direction. And we, when we come into this form, the perfect is already there, and then we've got what science is starting to refer to as epigenetics. And my take at this point in understanding is that epigenetics is literally all of the instruction sets that have been given through all time in our bloodline, and they are held in place by what the ancient scriptures refer to as the mind of man. If you remember the passage in... uh, where Yeshua is outside of the Garden of Gethsemane and Peter has got the sword and he's going after the high priest's servant. And Yeshua addresses Peter there directly as Satan. He says, get thee behind me, Satan. And then he defines what he means by it. He says, for you think in the mind of man rather than the plan of God. And what science is now calling epigenetics I've come to understand is that set of programming that has been passed on through the generations and it's held in place by the mind of man. And to me, the single objective, and this is the quantum still point, is to get the mind to let go. And that's where everything shifts. 